بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كلامه المجيد والفرقان الحميد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد كتبنا في الزبور من بعد الذكر أن الأرض يرثها عبادي الصالحون إن في هذا لبلاغا لقوم عابدين وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم I begin in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that His beloved Nabi and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His last and final messenger. We begin on this Mubarak Friday uh, expressing our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His help, His mercy, His blessings, His assistance and praying and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us, our families, our existence and everything that we have and everything around us. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. The verse uh, that I began with reciting are three verses, su- verses 105 through 108 of Surah Al-Anbiya in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ And we wrote in the Psalms, the Zabur, after having sent down the Torah that the righteous, the people that are righteous will inherit the earth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is a message for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you except as a mercy to mankind. Now interestingly enough as we uh, are about to begin inshallah very soon the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, uh, the first spring, this is a verse which is oft quoted and which would be the most perfect verse of the Qur'an to begin uh, any khatira and any uh, lecture with. That we have not sent you, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, except as a mercy to mankind. But in that, I want to address that slightly uh, differently today. We know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as uh, the most merciful of you know, merciful human beings, right? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just had mercy and compassion towards everyone, everyone and everything. The closing verses of uh, Surah At-Tawbah, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ Right? The Prophet ﷺ desires for you to accept Islam. بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ He's very kind, extra kind and merciful uh, towards the believers. But then we also see the example of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ as an individual who was merciful to even those that did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now with that said, when we talk about the mercy of the Nabi Of course, Allah is the most merciful of all merciful ones, but of, of His creation, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is extremely merciful. But in that, there were a few times, and that's what I want to begin with today, there were a few times uh, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a prayer, made a prayer against those individuals who, has, who had transgressed very far. Right, that their transgression had gone so far that the Prophet ﷺ made a dua against them, made dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deal with them. And this was not the general habit of the Prophet ﷺ. The general habit of the Prophet of Allah was to ask for mercy, was to seek mercy even for the oppressors. Right, there was one instant inst- instance. There's three instances I want to talk about. The first one being when the Prophet ﷺ was in Mecca. The Quraysh would harass the Prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, so much. And on one occasion, specifically, even through the remains of animals on the Prophet ﷺ or on his back, that's when the Prophet, right, it, you know, it's just push came to shove. Uh, that's when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam made a dua against them. He said, Allahumma alayka bi Quraysh. Oh Allah, deal with the Quraysh. Right? Up until then, and by the way, even after that, 
the Prophet ﷺ continued making dua for their guidance, uh, for their Islam. But there came a point even in the life of the Messenger ﷺ where enough was enough and the Prophet himself ﷺ made a prayer against them. On another instance, the, the, the narrations mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ had, uh, had sent a letter to Khusru, the emperor of Persia, and when he received that, inviting him to Islam, when he received that letter, he literally tore up the letter of the Messenger ﷺ. When the Prophet was informed of this, the Prophet ﷺ made a statement and said that they will be torn apart as a nation. And clearly there came a time when the Persia that once was no longer remained and history reminds us that they became torn for a lack of better words. <coughs> and so due to the high level of the aggression that sometimes people showed, that even the Prophet ﷺ made a dua against individuals. In, in one occasion, um, the Prophet ﷺ specifically against some of the leaders of the Quraysh made a dua against them. He said, Oh Allah, deal with Abu Jahl, deal with Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, Walid ibn Udbah, uh, Umayyah bin Khalaf, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. The Prophet ﷺ specifically even mentioned some individuals' names because of their transgression against Allah and His Messenger ﷺ. Now all of us, for those of us that are here today, uh, who believe in Allah, who believe in His Messenger, who are excited uh, when the month of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ comes our way, um, we ask ourselves a very, very simple question, and that is, how many of us, how many of us would want to take the chance that the Prophet ﷺ would make a dua and a prayer against us? How many of us would have the audacity, right, the courage, uh, to do something which would, which would upset Allah and His Messenger ﷺ. And that historically, it was proven that an individual who did a certain kind of an action was an individual against whom the Prophet ﷺ made a prayer. How many of us would want that? Right? There's a narration that's mentioned. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu narrates that a man, uh, the wife of a man in Medina came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam complaining about her husband. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam heard her case, listened to her. The Prophet sallallahu sat and he listened to what she had to say and he said sallallahu alayhi wasallam, go back and tell him, tell your husband that I am in the protection of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This was just a way of reminding that individual that the Nabi of Allah knows and the Nabi of Allah gives protection to your wife and as a result of the protection that he has given to her, you may not harm her, you may not hurt her. And so she went back after a little while or some few days, she comes back to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she says, O Messenger of Allah, he hasn't left me alone. In other words, he hasn't ceased, he continues to abuse me. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cut off, the narration mentions that he's cut off a small piece of his shirt, right? Cut off a small piece of his shirt and gave it to this woman. Just imagine the mercy of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So kind, he tore off a piece of his shirt. It was just an indication, a gesture, right? Someone would say, here, take my business card. Let them know that you've met with me. Um, or give them my, something along those lines, right? G gives her a, a piece of his cloth Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, go and give this to your husband and repeat to him that you are under the uh, protection, uh, my protection, the protection of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? As again, as evidence that if you continue your actions, you could be punished for your actions. She went, she comes back for the third time to the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, O Messenger of Allah, he beat me even more. He beat me even more. And the narration mentions that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raised his hands and supplicated, 
O oh Allah, deal with Walid. O oh Allah, deal with Walid. O oh Allah, deal with Walid. In other words, right, it was such a major transgression that the Prophet ﷺ didn't even choose to have him come to his court. The Prophet ﷺ made a dua and said, Oh Allah, this is such a transgression that I want you to deal with him. Now when we think about this, right, it's a very prominent hadith, when we think about this, right, we ask ourselves, how many of us would want to be on the receiving end of a prayer that the Prophet ﷺ did against someone who happened to be an individual who abused his spouse as a result of his abuse. Right? There's so many of us right, when it comes to Allah and His Messenger, praying five times a day, giving zakah, going to the masjid, you know, uh, celebrating the various different uh, events on the Islamic calendar. The month of Rabi'ul Awwal comes, people go from one gathering to another gathering, one gathering of dhikr, one gathering of remembrance, one gathering of the mention of the Nabi Sallallahu to another one. And all of us, you know, we, we dress in a certain way, we do certain things in a certain way where people would look up to us and say, oh my God, look at this individual, so pious, so and this and that. And we have all kinds of things, but... Think about it, right? If our character at home with our families is not impeccable, right? That's something that we will be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we happen to be amongst those individuals who abuse our family members, then we will be responsible for that in this dunya and the hereafter in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those brothers and sisters are huququl ibad, the rights of human beings, and we cannot take a step forth on the day of judgment until, until the oppressed, the aggressed has actually forgiven us, even if that happens to be an immediate family member, a spouse, a child, or even unfortunately in some cases, a parent. Right? How many of us? And these are the obligations. For do, going to some kinds of gatherings or events during the course of the month or during the course of the year, that's all voluntary. That's all voluntary. But being there and being kind for our family members is an obligation. And abuse of any form whatsoever is not allowed in our deen and in our tradition. Right? There's people who verbally abuse, and I'm going to come to some, I'm going to cite some examples in a few moments. There's people who turn to verbal abuse, there's people who turn to emotional abuse, and then there's people who turn to physical abuse, none of which is allowed in our tradition. None of which is allowed in our tradition at all. And then there's people who misquote a verse of the Quran which has an understanding of its own. Right? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says when your child of eight, the age of ten doesn't pray you can beat them. What does that mean? That does not mean abuse. That does not mean physical harm. That simply means to hold them, shake them, Right? In fact, there's so many rules around you know, what we can and cannot do. Right? Anything that's neck up is untouchable, not allowed. Stomach, untouchable. Private parts, not touchable. But usually we find when people are in anger, they beat the pulp out of their children and spouses. Where, where can you find the verse of the Qur'an to justify that specific behavior? Where can you find that behavior? Justified by Allah, sanctioned by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the reality is that and October happens to be, to be DV month, Domestic Violence Month, which is why we're talking about this in October, although we can and should be talking about this during the course of the year. We're finding that cases of DV are increasing. Right? We generally find 
that a parent figure, mother or father, could be abusing the children. We generally find that husbands are abusing the wives far more than we've seen before, unfortunately. And it must be said, but there's also cases of men being abused by their wives, usually not physical, but definitely emotional. Right, definitely emotional. Far less than it being the other way around, but it's a reality that it exists. And when we talk, and, and we also find in our homes and in our community, right, elder abuse. Elders are being, there's financial abuse towards the elders, there's emotional abuse towards the elders. The brother or sister that's looking after the parent is emotionally abusing the other siblings, is emotionally abusing the parent to do things, to sign off on paperwork, sign off on land and homes and jewelry and whatnot. None of that, brothers and sisters, is allowed in Islam. You may get away with it, but then if you see that you start becoming sick, you're out of a job, your life is miserable, your children abandon you when you get older, all of that is a result of our own actions. That's why Allah reminds us in the Quran, "Man amila salihan min dhak, man amila salihan, whoever does good deeds min dhakarin aw untha, from males or females, wa huwa mu'minun, and they are a believer, fala nuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyiba, we will give them a wholesome, we will give them a good life. If we want a good life. It's not simply by fulfilling the obligations and refraining from that which is haram, but also at the same time, it is our demeanor, our character with those around us. That's why there's a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, خيارukum, خيارukum The best of you are those who are best to their families, brothers and sisters. When we go home, mother or father, children, anyone, we should smile, we should put on a smile. We should say assalamu alaikum loudly. This is the adab of entering into a home. Not like mm, walk away to the bedroom and shut the door. No, I don't care how bad your day was at work. When someone asks you how your day was, they only ask you because they care for you. If you are on a public transport system and you had your face all turned up and may, you may even be crying, the person next to you won't even ask. They may feel bad if they see you crying, but they won't ask. No one's going to ask you on a public transport system. And the reason I say public transport system is because that's where you're going to interact with people. If you're in your own car, you're, th there's no way you're going to see people. But what I mean to say is that if you were with people on your way home and you had a bad day at work, you had a bad day at school, they're not going to ask you how you were. Only those that love you and care for you ask, how was your day? If you had a rough day, then, you know, it's fine to be slightly silent. It's fine to not share too much. It's okay to not pry all the time and ask how the individual's day was. Those of us that are outside the home, right, should come in with a smile. Those of us that are inside the home should greet those with a smile. Be nice to those around you. There's no reason to constantly, there's no reason to ignore anyone. There's no reason to constantly scream at someone. We find sometimes parents that are constantly screaming at their children. How come you didn't do this? How come you didn't do that? Just always screaming at them. And sometimes if you show them love, it's too late. Because they've never seen love come out of you. And I don't mean to say too late, but then it's going to take you a long time for them to listen to you out of your love. But being nice to people around you, in your home, to let it be a harmonious household in which there's no form of any abuse. And the reality is that as much as many individuals and many cultures and many countries in the West poke on the rights of the women in the East, and some rightfully so, but the reality is that Right here in the United States of America, the amount of women that are abused is very, very high in number. There's a statistic that goes at, at least uh, around the world, at least one woman in every three has either been beaten, coerced into a physical relationship, 
or otherwise abused in her lifetime. And the vast majority of times the abuser is from within one's own family. A brother, a cousin, an uncle. Which is why, and, and again a topic for a different day, but this whole idea of sleepovers, where we're sending our young children to the homes of others, is, a, is not a good idea. Your children need to be, Allah has blessed us with safety. Keep them within your own home. There's no reason for your children to go anywhere. Right? They say 25% of the female population will be abused at least once in their lifetime. Up to 35% of women and 22% of men that are going to ERs, emergency rooms, emergency departments, right, is as a result of DV, domestic violence. And by the way, it's not exclusive to one gender, one group, or national origin. This is a community-wide issue, and we have to come to terms and come, come to grip with it. But the only way we can do so is if we acknowledge and we work hard towards making our homes, to begin with, a harmonious place to go to. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on verbal abuse, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever says to his brother, O Kafir, then it applies to at least one of them. In other words, the one who says it. In other words, you know this physical abuse that we have? Bad words, screaming, put downs. People do this. People do this with their spouses. Wives do it to the husbands. Husbands do it to the wives. Parents do it to the children. I say parents. Because it's not always the father. It could be the mother too, putting the children down, making fun of them, comparing them to others. The Prophet ﷺ says that to curse a believer is like murdering them. The Prophet ﷺ says whoever preserves that which is between the jaws will have paradise guaranteed for them. Right? And then emotional abuse. Right? The Prophet ﷺ reminds us that emotional abuse is, there's a woman who comes to the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and says, Oh Messenger of Allah, right? My husband is not looking after me, right? He's completely ignored me. And what was the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam's response to the husband, to the Sahabi? He says, your body has a right over you, your Lord has a right over you, your guest has a right over you, your family has a right over you. Give everyone their due rights, brothers and sisters. This whole idea of you know, not talking to your children, not talking to your spouse, giving them the silent treatment, that is not healthy. That is not healthy. And, you know, the, the, the relationship between a husband and wife is also crucial, right? They're, the emotional relationship between them, the physical relationship between them, every, when you get married to someone and you remain married to them, your spouse has certain physical rights over you. Those need to be fulfilled, right? In, in, in the right time, in the right place, and what, you know. But those are, that's also something an individual needs to think of. I'm finding that so many relationships are going sour simply because of that one piece being missed out. And of course, it's not just that. It begins with emotions and warmth and care that's completely out of the picture and so on and so forth. That's why it's something to keep in mind. You know, uh, there's, there's, there's a few things I want to share before I close. First and foremost, I've said this before. Um, this year has been an interesting year. Working from home, children going to school from home, me doing this lecture on a computer screen and it freezing and I have to start over again. All of this is just weird. Cut people some slack for God's sake. Give people a break for God's sake. Give your children a break for God's sake. Give your spouse a break for God's sake. Give your parents a break for God's sake. Yes, some, we're, I'm finding, you know, that, you know, there's, uh, you know, sometimes y your in-laws are not living with you for the course of the entire year, but now they've been there for seven, eight months. And you're like, okay, I've had enough. They need to go, but maybe it's not safe for them to go. Right? What if one day you're put into a situation like that? Give people a break. Right? Stop speaking to your spouse as a result of their parents living, you know, ex over, overstaying their welcome, whatever that means, because the Prophet ﷺ says, Anta wa maluka li abika, you and your wealth belong to your father. There's an explanation for that. Husbands don't take this out of context, but 
You know, give people a break. Give your spouses a break. Give everyone a break at home. Be nice to people. Right? It's an interesting year. Inshallah, things will get better. If you happen to be a parent or even a child living at home that's always stressed out, angry, get some professional help. Maybe you need professional help. Maybe there's something genuinely wrong with you. And don't ever forget, whatever Allah has decreed for you will make it your way no matter what happens. All we have to do and make is the effort. The result is with Allah. If Allah hasn't made us hungry and homeless until now, inshallah, He will never make us homeless and hungry. Rizq and sustenance is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about that. Just do your part. Allah will, take, Allah will look after you. But also keep in mind that when you do have money, don't overextend yourself. Right? Don't buy that home in usury when you can be living in a smaller home comfortably. You don't need to have that fancy car that you buy on usury because the result of that usury, the result of things, acquiring things that we don't need, showing off, doing things to show off to others, the result of that could be some of our sustenance being snatched away from us. Allah had no plans to snatch that sustenance away from us, but because we ended up using the sustenance He gave us incorrectly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to take away some of that sustenance as well. And I want to close with two things. You know, subhanAllah, for those of you that know, know that we have, we have a shelter for victims of domestic violence in the Bay Area for Muslim sisters. And believe it or not, it's, unfortunately, it's usually full. It's usually full. And there were, there were individuals who were farsighted many years ago who said, you know, this is a problem in our community and we need to work on it. And then just last year, the board of uh, the North American Islamic Shelter for the Abused, Nissa, they all came together and said that we needed a transition home for our, our, uh, the victims after they have completed their stay at the shelter. And the community came through and you know, they were able to purchase a transition home. In other words, there, Alhamdulillah, we do live in a community in which there are resources, but also keep in mind that unfortunately, that institution and those homes are usually full. Right? Those homes are usually full. And the reality is <coughs> that those people, those victims of domestic violence, sisters who are born or raised here in the United States and who have families, they don't even come to that shelter. They just go home. They go to their parents' homes. It's only those who have zero support that end up there. So the, the people that end up at the shelter is not the amount of people that are being abused because there's many that are being abused that just remain silent. If you are a victim of domestic abuse, then you need to speak up. You need to find help. Don't let people tell you you need to be silent and be in that relationship and just be patient and so on and so forth. That's not how a normal relationship works. No matter how pious your spouse may be because that is not a sign of piety. The Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, we will never find the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam acting like this with any of his spouses. So no matter what your parents or your relatives or your cousins tell you, that's not a healthy relationship. Brothers and sisters, all of us, let's make a pact. Let's make a promise to Allah and to ourselves to be nice and kind when we go home. Take your children out for ice cream. Take them out for dinner. Be nice to them. Spend time with them. They will not all be perfect. I know some of us were raised by very strict and principled parents. Our children are slightly different. They will figure out their path in life. Our job is to show them the way. Our job is to guide them. And after a certain age, the stricter you are, the further they will want to go away from you. I find many young men and women when they uh, get out of high school or when they're applying for college, you ask them and say, where do you want to go to college? They'll say like, as far as I can from home or all the way on the East Coast. You know, usually a sentence like that means a lot. It means I just want to get away from home. That's not, you know, parents may be thinking my child is mashallah old and mature and wants to explore. Not really. They just want to get away from you. So if your husband or your wife, parents, if your husband or your wife is telling you to take a chill pill and breathe, they're probably asking you to do the right thing. Husbands, if you happen to be someone that goes home and screams and proud of the fact that your wife and children are scared of you, that will be held against you on the day of judgment. A good husband is someone who is kind. Mothers, sisters, if you are someone who's always bickering, always 
just, you know, going after things with your children, your spouse, you need to change that. Because that will be a, a source of resentment for your children. I want to close. One of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu's employees came to him one day. Um, came to him one day and finding him lying on his back with his children playing around him. This man told the children to stop, right? And said, stop, stop doing that. Umar radiallahu anhu asked and said, how are you with your family? His response was, when I come into my house, those who are talking go silent, right? You know, like I'm strong at home. Everyone's scared of me at home. There's, you know, there's people who are proud of that. Umar radiallahu anhu responded to that individual statement and said that you are immediately fired. If you can't show compassion to, you, to your own wife and children, then how can you show compassion to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? May Allah make us compassionate, may Allah make us kind, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes filled with love and may they remain with love and may our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren be around us all the time insha'Allah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.